Good morning, my name is Fade Ogunro and I am the CEO slash founder of bookinsafrica.com. So in the next 10 to 15 minutes, I'm going to be very honest with you and I'm going to try and be as insightful and as helpful as I can when I'm talking about the business of numbers. Um, I want you guys to know me, forget the media personality that you know of, think of me as a creative businesswoman and ultimately I am a solution provider. Um, I'm always thinking about ways to offer cheaper services, streamline the services and how I can offset costs. And this came about as my experience as a TV producer for my other company, Film Factory, which you may or may not have heard of. So I have a lot to learn myself. I'm going to be honest. I am not a thought leader in the tech industry. No, not at all. Bookings Africa went live six weeks ago. So everything that I've learned is what I'm going to give you, what I've learned in the last two years doing my research and what I did with numbers to get me to where I am today. It's that simple. So by the end of it, I hope that you would have gained insight, specifically if you have a startup or if you have a business idea that you think is fantastic. So just by a show of hands here, anybody here have an idea that they're working on? They haven't started it quite yet, but they've just started maybe doing a business yes, model, okay. business plan, am I right? Or do we have any startups that's like maybe less than a year old? Show of hands? Okay, great. So specifically for those that have showed their hands, I think you will definitely, hopefully, find this useful. So um, what I want to do now is I want to show you the process of how I gathered data and how I used it to get an angel investor on board and launch my website all within one year. We're going to start macro. I'm going to show you the macro data that I used and why I feel like research and numbers are very important. And then by the end of the presentation, I'll go into the micro numbers of how I actually harnessed that myself. So when I'm talking about macro, there's two books that I believe that everybody who wants to do business successfully within Africa should know about because it was of immense help to me. If you want to read books from Bill Gates and all the other billionaires across the globe, yes, feel free to do so, but I think it's also important to learn about successful businesses and how they, what they've done within Africa. So, Feyi Olubodun, who is the, I think he's now the former MD and CEO of Insight Publicists. He left in November, but he wrote a book called The Villager, How Africans Consume Brands. That's it, I advise everyone to try and get a copy. And the second book, which is also actually referenced in this book, is by Acha Leke. He is a senior partner and chairman of McKinsey's Africa. It's called Africa's Business Revolution. These two books, I read them, and it really put Africa in perspective. So this is going to be a little bit of the part where you might want to get your pe pen and paper out, get some notes. I'm going to be giving you some facts and figures, and I believe that this is going to be very helpful for any business because it's very important info. So these are the statistics that I found out about Nigeria. Nigeria accounts for approximately one-sixth of Africa's people, and it is said that one out of every 10 black persons in the world is a Nigerian. The country's population stands currently at 180 million, and by 2030, it is expected to have a population larger than the United States. This population is split into 5% upper class, 25% middle class, and 70% lower class. This means that the middle population, middle class population of Nigeria is equivalent to the entire population of Australia. That's our 25% middle class is equivalent to 75% of the entire population of South Africa. With an average birth rate of 4% Sorry, with an average birth rate of four children per household, it is easy to understand Nigeria this way. It is a country with a population of Russia, sitting on a landmass twice the size of California and growing by the population of Romania annually by birth. That's a lot of statistics, right? Now let's go into the digital statistics that you might find useful. In 2014, TA brief touched on this, and so did you, Ayani, really quickly. Around 2014, um, the stats is 67% of the population are under 30 years old. Nigeria is one of the fastest growing digital markets in the world, 
the population leapfrogged the technology adoption curve within five years from 2010 to 2014. So in 2014, there was a 68% increase in smartphone usage, an 85% increase in mobile phone calls, and a 51% in decrease in line line usage. 77% um, of the connected population spent more disposable income and data, and 83% of their smartphones were used for browsing the internet. So basically, if 70% of the population are under the age of 30, and between 2010 and 2014, 83% of those people are using their phones for data. Naturally, if you've gotten any bit of common sense, and you, tr you also know that in 2030, we're going to have more people in Nigeria than America. I would advise that whatever business that you want to do, if you want it to survive in 2030 and beyond, you need to be looking at the trend of getting online. Everybody agree with me with that? All right. So we're on the same page. Now, another st interesting statistic that blew my mind, which is why I think you definitely need to get this book. It says, by population size alone, we are one of Africa's, we are Africa's most populous nation and we've been so for a very, very long time. The, another striking number about Nigeria that makes this country very, very suitable, if you're looking at the African market, the number is 70%, which is the population of Nigerians under the age of 35. This is an incredible number, and this is where I'm getting to. Africa is the youngest continent on the planet. In fact, when we look at the top 20 countries that have the highest population of child, people under the age of 15, one five, the top 20 countries are all African. Nigeria is number 15. So that means we have 15, 14 other countries that have more than 50% of their population right now under the age of 15. This is simply too powerful a metric to ignore. The youth of Africa are not only the future, but we are also globally the most significant consumer base of the future. And generally, these two books, they give you a lot more statistics and they kind of guide the narrative of what you need to know. These are some statistics that I also found were very interesting when I was doing my research. Um, especially when it comes to Nigeria, the unemployment rate stands about 54% and the 20 million unemployed young people between the ages of 20 and 35. At the normal rate of population growth, that means about 650,000 youth are going to be entering the unemployment market every year. So not only do we have 20 million people who are unemployed, by the end of 2019, 650,000 more people are going to join. And that increases annually. So it goes to show, this numbers that shows that there's a dire need for job opportunities, skill acquisitions, and training for Nigeria's young people. Let's look at market trends, because we're all about numbers here, right? I'm talking about the business of numbers. So not only do you need the micro information about your business, but on a macro level, whatever industry you want to get into, it's, in, it's very important to know the trends. Youth unemployment, we can see from January 2015 to 2017, it's increased. The, the ages of people from 10 to 35, more people are getting older that are unemployed. And the number of those people, we have 33.1% of the population are unemployed. Staggering figures. According to PricewaterhouseCooper, the media market share in 2016, $3.6 billion was Nigeria's total entertainment and media market share. By 2019, the end of this year, they're predicting over $5 billion. So for me, I'm thinking, how can I harness this? I know there's loads of creative young people who are unemployed, and I know there's going to be more money being spent every year in the media industry. I'm going to get my foot in that door. Right? So, oh, wrong way. Another market trend, like I mentioned earlier from this book, is the aging population. In 2015, I'm just going to get a little bit closer here. We can see, this is from the World Health Organization, 30% of the population that is 60 years and above in 2015 in the far right of Asia, 10 to 30 percent that are over 60 years old. This was in 2015. You can see the massive blue across the world. 10 to 30 percent of the population in 2015 were over the age of 60 years old. Africa, we're grey. What does that mean? We're all young. There's no old people in Africa. That's a good thing if you're in business. 
If you look at um, the young in the world, change in proportions from 1980 to 2015 to 2050. Notice the green, that's what you need to notice here. The world is getting older. Africa is the only one that has green by 2050. We're the only continent that pretty has green, which means 30% of our population, at least, are going to be between the ages of 10 to 24. Whilst everywhere else in the world, they're going to be 65 and above. So if you want to do business between the years 2030 and 2050, you need to be speaking to the youth. We're going to have the global buy-in power. So whatever job, you're, whatever company, whatever startup that you want to get involved in, you need to make sure it's sustainable for that time to thrive. And Africa is a trend right now. Everybody's jumping on Africa. PricewaterhouseCoopers and WHO have these statistics. So a lot of these foreign companies already have these statistics. And they want to infiltrate the market right now. So they're going to be relevant by 2030 and 2050, which is why I believe everybody here, you need to buckle down and for you to last, you need to think long term. There's going to be lots of volatile issues that you're going to face in the short term. But once you can ride that out, you're going to have market domination and you're going to then have um, less of a barrier to entry for co um, your competition. So I think it's very important for whatever business you want to do, adopt it now. So that is basically how um, the macro level of the data that I gathered in order to figure out how to go about Bookings Africa, right? And this is a very important quote. Um, basically, half of it is missing, but it's basically the, um, about Interswitch, how they, the founder of Interswitch, created a completely new disruptive model. He realized that the way the banking system worked in Nigeria was not efficient whatsoever. So digital transaction company, Interswitch's founder, noted the piles of cash Nigerians use for everyday purchases and built Nigeria's electronic banking infrastructure from scratch. This is a truly disruptive book, suggesting that today's ambitious entrepreneurs don't need to look to space or silicon, but to the savannah, which is, of course, right here in Africa. So that brings me to my company, obviously, Bookings Africa, the home of creatives. Sign up today, get booked, get paid. What exactly is Bookings Africa? You've heard of Booked by Us. A lot of people were like, oh, you guys are the same. No completely different business model. It's an online marketplace for creatives that facilitates the process of booking personnel services required for media production. So if you're a hairstylist, a makeup artist, a clothing stylist, a photographer, a voiceover artist, is there anywhere online that you can pretty much have your own website and get booked and get paid online right now? No, there isn't. Bookings Africa is the solution. And it came about as the frustrations that I have as a TV producer. I've been producing TV commercials for over 10 years. And sourcing one location can take me three to four months to source. If there was a place where I could go online, just like I do when I'm in South Africa, or when I do when I'm in London, and I can just source, uh, my budget is 100,000 naira for the day. I want to shoot somewhere in Lagos. And it, these are the, I wanted to have a swimming pool, a car park. And those are the criteria that I have what's available. There was nothing like that online. <coughs> so I decided to create my own platform because, like I said, I'm solution-minded. Now, if you are a startup, this is a checklist that I think is imperative for everybody, especially if you're going to look for an investor. Business plan, business model, go-to-market strategy, your pitch deck, validation. You need a pitch. An elevator pitch, which is a 60-second pitch, your 10-minute pitch, your 30-minute pitch, practice it all. Value proposition, financials, raising capital, and company formation. When I decided to launch Bookings Africa, um, I do have to admit, I have no knowledge about the tech industry. I literally don't even know the password to my own Facebook. My PA is somewhere here, and she can testify to that. I'm not in the tech world whatsoever. But I am, like I said, a pr solution provider. So I want to encourage everybody, even if you're not in the tech space, it doesn't matter. As long as tech is the solution to the business that you want to provide, there's ways that you can go about doing it. And you find a lot of information on YouTube. So here, Harvard iLab is a page that I found on YouTube, and it basically helped me with everything. It helped me with my business plan, my business model, my pitch deck, 
um, pr proof of concept. Everybody was throwing out the buzzword MVP, MVP, and no, it's not most valuable player, minimum viable product. I learned all of that from the Harvard iLab um, series. It's basically um, a, less, a one hour video or two hour videos from Harvard University. So I almost feel like I have a master's degree right now. Um, I literally probably watched about 40 hours. I went to school in January, February last year. Every night I would sit at home and I would watch one of these and make my notes. So everything from value propositions, roadmap to success, business model, hiring and building a team. I literally, like I said, had to teach myself from scratch. So if you are in your startup stages, this is one of the most important websites I think you should check out. Now, this is where we get into the micro part of it. <laughs> MVP, minimum viable product. Don't assume what people want. You need to prove the concept the customers will respond to. What's the minimum product that you can build to test your vision and that solves your problem? So I asked myself, what's the smallest thing that I can do to try and figure out if it's actually a business or if it's just a good idea? Number one, I found a problem worth solving because I faced that problem as a producer. So I decided to create a landing page, a one-pager, where talent would sign up. They'll let me know what service they want to provide. Are you a model? Are you a makeup artist? Are you a voiceover artist? Are you a photographer? Click the service that you provide. Give me your email address and your contact details. Um, so they signed up. So I was gathering data to show there's interest. Will people pay and are people even interested? I started my Facebook for Bookings Africa, LinkedIn, Instagram, all of that. And then there were shares, likes, conversations, people talking about it. Clients started calling me and asking me for this service, even though the website wasn't live at all. Then I got people to, I, I sorted out my business model. Customer interview, I think is very important. So all the talents and the clients, I sat a few people down. I said, what are the, what's the biggest problems that you face? So this way you're understanding frustrations, you know what the main problems are, and this helps you prioritize the issues to solve, especially if you already have competition. I'm kind of in a white space, but if you already have competition, Knowing your customers will enable you to fix the issue smarter than your current competition. So this is kind of what like my pre-registration page looked like. The personal information, what services you offer up the top, models, photographers, voiceover artists, that's the one pager. And I did that in the first month that I launched it in February 2018. I had 600 models sign up. 150 photographers, 50 voiceover artists, 200 makeup artists, 40 hairstylists, 15 clothing stylists, five locations. And I had ad agencies, production houses, and clientele come to me to make bookings manually because the website still wasn't live. I was doing all this to prove my concepts to potential investors because these are the sort of figures that they're looking for. So when I proved the concept, I launched the website along the pre-registration website in 2020, 2018 and started manual bookings. In January, I made 1.5 million. This is gross revenue. February, 2 million. And between January last year, when I proved the concept with a one-page website to January 2019, bearing in mind the website only went live last month, I had about roughly just under 2,000 talents that signed up in one year. And the gross revenue from the clientele that approached me directly was about 15 million and I work on about a 20% commission. So I got about 3.9 million. Once again, it's not profit, it's just revenues. Um, in the first month that we launched in April, um, I've got 468 verified talents that have signed up on the website that's live right now. There's about 2,000 people that have signed up, but our verification process goes on, and we need to make sure that you are who you say you are. So right now, there's about 468, just maybe a little bit more than that. This is probably about two weeks old, that have about maybe just under 600 that have signed up right now. On the 1st of May, clients are going to be able to book. Because I did not want to get a website that's going to have bad user experience where a talent will go online and then they don't, a client will go online and they don't have enough options of talent to choose from. So I decided to populate the site first of all before allowing clients to book. So clients will then be able to do their manual bookings, digital bookings online from the 1st of May. Now moving forward, what am I going to do with all this data? I've already approached a few people in Silicon Valley just to test the waters to see where they're at. Like I said, with the market trends, a lot of companies are coming to Africa. So they actually want companies who already have access to data with the youth. 
So if I'm able to say, here's data of a million users that I've got, a million users that I have between the ages of 18 to 35, this is their spending power, this is how much they don't make on average, they already have this data and they're willing to pay tens and millions of dollars for that information. Um, moving forward, this website is live right now. In September, it's going to turn into an app, which I'll be launching, and it will then be available Pan-Africa. So right now, I'm using this website as a test just to make sure that everything is running smoothly. So you can now see how I went from the macro level of doing my research on market trends to the micro level to proving the concept that was then enable me that enabled me to then harness that information, share it with my investors, and prove that it was a viable business for me to then get an investor on board and get to where I am pretty much within one year. So that's the story of Bookings Africa. It's very new, but I'm hoping that you'll stay with me throughout the years and maybe next year, I &E, I'll be back here saying, Mark Zuckerberg made an offer already and I don't know any of you guys, I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, so that's my story and um, feel free to catch me later on if you have any more questions.